Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. If you saw our community post from the other day, you will know there is a new truck here on our homestead. I'm really excited about that one. In this video, you will get to see more of that truck, see what it looks like, all that fun stuff. But more importantly, we got a carport to put over it to protect it. Oh yes, gotta keep it looking nice. <laughs> Let's go. I'm standing right now at the back part of our driveway. Here you can see the new storage shed that we bought. And I have picked the spot to put this carport up so that it's going to be useful, close to park in and get in and out of, but also not be in the way. As you can see, it's currently being occupied. That is the truck bed trailer that you've seen us use for a very long time. It is um, not useless at this point because honestly, that's the gravel getter and the dump trailer, the utility trailer. But it is occupying the spot that I want to clean up and get set up to put the carport to park the truck. So the first thing to do is load up our scrap metal here at our scrap metal pile. We've saved things like broken appliances, the scrap metal where they cut the tongue off of the trailer, metal roofing, and other things like that. I'm going to put those on our utility landscape trailer because we're going to take that to the local recycling center in a couple of days. Until then, putting it on the trailer and on wheels is a great way to get it out of our way and allow us to move it so we can continue on with this project. So it seems like a good time to use the Jeep, the old trusty Grand Cherokee, one more time. Maybe not the last time, but pretty close to it. And let's load some metal into our trailer. One thing that's very important to us is that our channel is built around reality and honesty. So what you're about to see is the junkiest part of our property, our trash pile, our messy corners. But you know what? It needs to get unmessied to make it look better in the end. And why not? Truth is truth. So here we go. <laughs> So while I'm probably not going to be in the rest of the video, maybe here and there, I am going to be in this, my soap shack. I'm going to be making soap today, which takes several hours to do. But again, you may see me popping in and out. I think he can do the rest of it by himself. Maybe with Elijah's help. I think we're done with the trailer for now. It's loaded up with all of the scrap metal, plus the big large pieces of plastic that's trash. We're going to take it to our local place. Not today, because it's Sunday, so it'll be probably tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get the Jeep out of the way. I'll probably park it over here at the workshop, and then we'll continue working on cleaning out this space. It's looking pretty good. You probably can't tell it yet on camera, but it is looking pretty good. So once we get the Jeep out of the way, it should look even better pretty good. We gotta move the Jeep. Okay. Keys are in it. Let's go. All right, first things first, get that seat forward. <laughs> you reach the pedals all right? Yeah. Okay. Seat belt. Okay.
Take the key out. Drop the beep in this. So I'm going to help our crew finish up the last bit of cleanup and we are ready to assemble the carport. Disclaimer, the carport has been sitting here for a little while so what you're going to see is not a nice new pretty box, but you know what, it's fine. It should still be good, it'll be a good test of the metal, how does it hold up to the elements after several months. So we'll get it out, bring it over. The covers have been stored high and dry so they should be good and look nearly perfect. But otherwise, let them finish up while I go get the stuff and we'll see you guys back here for assembling the carport. So this is the exact same company and brand name as the first carport we ever put up out here on our property. It is either Quiscent or Quick Tent. I choose to say Quick Tent because it seems to apply so it's a quick tent brand this one that we have today is just the canopy it doesn't have sides but the previous one that we've had out here for a year now is completely sided and enclosed that one has held up wonderful it has held up very very well we've had some seriously strong winds big storms and a year of sun and weather exposure still looks great Okay, it doesn't look great as you're seeing here, but it is still holding up fine, structurally sound, strong, and it is still going to rock and roll for us for several years to come. So what we're going to set up for today is a similar 10 foot wide, 20 foot long carport, galvanized poles, and white cover. However, this is just the canopy and poles. It is not a fully enclosed garage, it is just a carport. We've drug out everything out of the weeds and it looks like it's been in the weeds. One of the cool things that I did not know is inside the box, all the poles are individually wrapped in their little plastic bags. So they've weathered or not weathered perfectly fine, but they're also galvanized. So it's not like they're going to rust or rot either. All right, let's go ahead and dig into the stuff, start putting this thing together and make some headway. Here's a look at one of the pieces and this carport what really sets it apart as far as the ones that I found these are galvanized pipes and fittings and they are durable it is some pretty thick gauge steel like I said we've had one up for over a year had zero problems so I'm definitely confident this is also going to last a long time 
One thing that's unique with this style carport, as you're going to see, is it does include some cable ties to keep the roof tensioned and together. I don't know how great or bad that's going to work out. I don't know how easy or difficult it will be, but it'll be interesting to see the differences between how this one feels sturdy-wise and our other one, which does not have the cable system. What we're going to do is begin by assembling the roof. You start by assembling your ridge beam, your side beam, connect them together. Then you connect the other side of the roof, put half the legs on, the other half, then you have your standing frame. After that, you cover it up with your canopy and anchor it all down to the ground. Overall, it's a very easy process, easy to follow instructions. You definitely want to have some help with this. And if you have the choice, don't do it on a windy day. So saying that a carport is easy to put together is a very subjective statement. I think what would be kind of fun, it'll be a skill building exercise, a teamwork exercise, maybe a patience exercise. I'm going to let the boys take over. I want to let them have the instructions. It is a pictorial instruction so they can see it and interpret it from there. See if they can assemble this thing and I'll step in and help if need be. But let's see, can they do it? I bet they can, we'll watch. We are ready to lift this thing up. Now, if you saw me briefly there, stand it up, get the cover out, and then stand it back down. It's because I remembered doing it this way, having the legs on one side and not on the other, is the easiest way to get that cover put on evenly, safely, without the use of a ladder, and make sure the ball bungees have everything held good and tight. So now that that's done, I can put the legs on this side, we'll stand it up in place, and then we'll continue using all the ball bungees to attach the top to it all around the perimeter. They give you a lot, which is great. You don't want to skimp on those because that's what holds the top down. Assembly is all done. Our next step is to move this thing in place where we want it. I've got Angela coming out. She has just got a second to get this done. So we're all four going to get on four corners, pick it up, and move it to where we want it to be. All right, everybody pick up. Pick up. Bring it forward. All right. Pick up higher, Isaac. Pick up higher, Isaac. Okay. Right, down. Way. Sit it down for a second. We're only going to go this way maybe a foot, guys. Okay. Look, 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 look. That was pretty easy with some help. We got the carport in place where we want it. Now we need to anchor it to the ground. This carport does come with anchors if you want to use those. However, I have some anchors that I've used in the past that I just love and they are super, super strong. Here they are. American Earth Anchors 18 inch long ground screw. Literally like a giant screw that you drive into the ground. These are the same anchors that we used for my workshop Angela's Soap Shed, our new storage building, 
and the same company that we use anchors for the greenhouse. I think at this point you can say I am a fan of American Earth anchors. They are made in the USA, all American made, and they are awesome anchors. There'll be a link to these down below if you're interested. Like I said, the carport does come with some if you want to use them, but for something that you want rock solid that's not going to go anywhere, this is what I like to use. One caveat with this though, you need to have a square drive object, whether it be a giant ratchet, a bar, or something of the sort to put them into the ground. Depending on your soil, you may need something really strong like this. So I've got my cordless impact wrench, the anchor, and let's go attach this to the ground and tie it to where it will never go anywhere. All right, so to anchor the carport, I have some true 550 paracord. This is very, very strong, thin rope. I have looped it down through the cable with the earth anchor, and I have looped it over the top of the metal bar, and I'm just cinching it down, and then I'll tie it into place. This same exact kind of setup we had for our camper, that white canopy we had set up for months. We went through some really, really strong storms, and this worked great for that. So I hope and expect that it'll work great for this as well. The benefit of doing it this way is it is portable and removable. If we change our minds or just don't like how it looks or need to move it for, I don't know, whatever reason, we can remove everything. Those earth anchors, that's gonna be tricky to take those away, but we can remove them. They do back out as easily as they back in. So there you go. As easy as it was to put those in the ground, it'll be just that easy to take them out. That also shows you why I use my impact wrench and I didn't try and do it with a half inch ratchet. So if you have really hard soil, like we have hard pan out here in Tennessee, get an impact wrench or borrow one from somebody or I don't know, pay your kids two bucks to do it. <laughs> so there, this is this side done. It does still move, but it will not blow away. So let me go ahead and do the rest of the anchors and then we'll have a final look-see at this thing. I just got back from the hardware store and I picked up some interesting things for the carport. I have some foam pipe insulation wraps and some black duct tape. Sam, what are you doing with this? Well, this is an idea and suggestion that I got from Angela's dad. Once I showed him a picture of this with the truck in it and said, hey, it's cool, but I got this problem. He said, pick up some pipe insulation and duct tape and that'll solve it.
Okay, I didn't hit the pole with my door. I mean, obviously I'm not gonna do that, but that's the purpose of wrapping the pole in the foam is in case, you know, the many times that I back here and park, if I or someone else is in the passenger seat that's under the age of 11, decides to throw the doors open, I shouldn't hit the metal door on the metal pole. Storage shed, whole other issue. I can't really wrap that in foam, but at least on this side, I can give myself that little bit of insurance. And again, that tip and trick is from Angela's dad. He has carports like this and they use it for their vehicles here and there. And it's something he's learned over the years. So definitely something I'm going to apply. I don't want to learn the hard way. So I'll apply others lessons. All right, is that time? Time for a truck tour and truck talk. So here you go. The truck is a 2003 Silverado 1500 series half ton truck. It has about 163,000 miles on it, has the Vortec 5.3 liter V8 engine, is an automatic, a two wheel drive, and a long wheelbase truck. The truck was a one owner vehicle. The person I bought it from bought it brand new himself from Florida, somewhere in the middle of the state, not near the coast. And he has owned it and taken care of it ever since 2003 when he bought it. It's easy to hear someone say, yeah, I bought it new or I'm the one owner and it not really show. I really think this is a truck that shows it has only been driven by one person. They have meticulously cared for it and honestly done every bit of maintenance and upkeep that I would want to do. So it looks really, really nice. Looking at this truck, you would not think that it is almost 20 years old, but it is. It has 163,000 original miles. It has had the transmission serviced by dealerships on regular intervals, has had all of its maintenance and upkeep done timely, and has been babied. I believe this truck has also spent most of its life within a garage, so that is why it was very important for us to try and do our version of a garage. We don't have the budget or anything like right now to build a stick built legitimate garage. So this carport was definitely something we could put into place now to continue to take care of this truck, do our best to keep it nice and clean and upkeep it and just preserve how nice of a truck it is for as long as we can. So I've been looking for a truck off and on probably about eight months. And it seems like every time I would get some money saved up to buy one, something else would happen and that money would evaporate. I think there's a lot of people out there who can relate to this and think, yep, that sounds familiar. But it finally happened that things worked out and I was able to finally get a truck. I'm not a diehard Chevy, Ford, GM, Toyota person. I'm very much a fan of any vehicle that is good and works is fine with me. That being said, I didn't specifically seek out a Chevrolet, but this is the one that popped up and the one that I ended up getting. It was in my price range, which was goal number one. It had the mileage around the range that I wanted, which is goal number two, and it was in a phenomenal condition and everything for the price, which was honestly goal number three. Outside of that, I did not specifically seek out a long wheelbase, and I did not specifically seek out a two-wheel drive. My criteria for a truck was it had to be large enough for all four of us to fit in, Angela, myself, and the boys, still be usable size, and be one that is popular enough that I can find parts and accessories or repair it easily. I did not want to find some obscure rare truck. I did not want to find a really old one. And I just wanted to find something that was a good all purpose general use truck that we could have and keep for a very long time without breaking the bank or needing any kind of special mechanical skills or places to work on it. As such, we actually found this one locally here where we live in Tennessee. However, it originates from Florida, I believe around Lakeland area, if I'm remembering right. So it's not a coastal vehicle. It is not rusted out at all. It's not been exposed to salt water. And as you can tell, it has been babied and well taken care of. I think most of its life was spent down in Florida, although over the past year or two, I believe they moved up this area and that's how we found it and it found us. I've crawled under this truck and it looks amazing for its age and even without its age into consideration, it looks very, very nice. There is nothing rusted out. None of the bodywork has been messed up. The paint still looks good. And honestly, this kind of looks like a time capsule of a truck. So needless to say, I'm really excited to have a truck. We have never had one large enough to fit the whole family into. So there's never been a truck that has been the family vehicle. It's always been an obscure truck that was occasionally used here and there, something I drove to work, or really was just an extra or side vehicle. 
I don't think this will supplant the minivan as far as our road trip machine, although it is a high contender, but this is absolutely a great vehicle to use for myself anytime I need, but also our trips to hardware stores, any kind of lumber specialty stores here or there, wherever, it's gonna be comfortable and perfect for that. It is not intended to be a farm truck, so the fact that it's only two-wheel drive does not bother me. It's something that Angela and I talked about for quite a while and decided, you know what, we're okay with it. We don't have any plans to take this thing off-road, and honestly, for ground work or property work, we have an ATV and a tractor, and those two will be fine. So if you got any questions or anything, let me know. I'll leave them for me down below, and I'll try and answer them. It is new to me, but I've kind of gone around in and out and underneath it a lot, and I've done a lot of research, and I also know quite a bit about Chevrolets, so it's not a completely unknown vehicle to me as well. All right, truck talk is over. Now let's see how it fits in this carport. Let Angela come back and take a look at it and talk some more at you guys, all right? That's what we do. We'll talk. So as you can see, it fits pretty good. There's a little bit of overhang at the back because of the placement of the pole and the door, it's just kind of do that. So the back of the truck hangs out of the car for a little bit, but this is a very long truck anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half ton extended cab with long wheelbase truck. It is over 20 feet long. So it is what it is. I like the space, I like how it looks, and I love the truck. It is a very nice looking truck. And I'm glad that you have something to cover it since the paint is like perfect on it. Yes. So it's the next day. As you can tell, a little bit of wardrobe change, change of lighting. I don't know. You finished making soap yesterday. I did. You didn't get to have fun out here with this again. No, but, that's okay. But the boys <laughs> did the majority of the assembly of the carport. As you guys saw, Elijah did a ton. Isaac was there to help. And then I just jumped in and helped at the very end. The instructions were easy to use, easy to follow for him and anyone else. And like I said, we've had a similar style of carport for over a year. It's done great, so we're sure this one will too. And it's been through high winds and it's underneath some trees, so we've put it through the ringer or whatever you want to say. Yeah, yeah. And we have not babied it either. We have not cared for it necessarily, so yeah. It's held up great. Beautiful truck aside, carport aside. What do you think of the space? I am very pleased at the cleanliness of it. It looks so much better than it did. <laughs> it really does. I mean, hey, most of it was junk. Yes, we hauled it off, it is gone. And so there's so much more room here for something or just nothing. Nothing is okay. Yeah, works for me. We can have something somewhere else. <laughs> so this is a good guy. Well guys, hopefully you enjoyed getting to see us put the carport together, clean up our area a little bit, and if it's your thing, see the new truck as well. I'm really excited about it. I think you're equally as excited as you can be. Yeah. <laughs> but all in all, it looks great and this area looks a lot better too. If you want to check out the car for it, there is a link to it down below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on the homestead. See ya. Bye. I feel like I have mosquitoes all over me. Yeah. <laughs> and black tape it's not duck name brand it is wait a second sweet or well it's d-u-c-t it's not a name brand is it do you got any questions or comments look for them um where they go hug it there you go carport hugger hopefully you enjoy getting to see our new truck and the canopy it's a carport not a canopy this is a tool you use, most commonly will see with mechanics using for taking wheels off of objects. Usually vehicles, vehicles have wheels. If you want to check out the carport, it's a canopy and it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a carport, man. So I like to couple the impact driver, not impact driver, impact wrench. It's an impact wrench. I am very pleased with the amount of cleanliness, or okay. Set up the camera. Do something for one minute, move the camera. Set up the camera, do something, move the camera. <laughs> That's the way we roll. Yeah, that worked pretty good. Try to keep it separate, let's keep them separate. This way is the truck. Look at that, me in the way. I don't have any idea what 
what to do for dinner. <laughs>